I'm Jim McWilliam, an orthopedic surgeon from New York. I'll be demonstrating three osteotomies frequently used for reconstruction of the adult flat foot deformity. The medial displacement calcaneal osteotomy, the lateral column lengthening or Evans osteotomy, and the dorsal opening wedge cuneiform or cotton osteotomy. The medial displacement calcaneal osteotomy is performed through a lateral oblique incision behind the perineal tendons. The osteotomy is started with a saw and completed with an osteotome. Laminar spreaders are used to gently stretch the medial soft tissues. Guide wire placement can be visualized through the osteotomy site. The tuberosity is manually displaced about one centimeter and the osteotomy is provisionally fixed. The near cortex of the calcaneal tuberosity is drilled and countersunk. The Arthrex 6.7 millimeter cannulated screws are ideal for calcaneal osteotomy fixation. The thread pitch and depth maximize compression and pullout strength. The low profile head minimizes hardware irritation and the need for subsequent removal. The incision for the Evans osteotomy is centered over the calcaneal cuboid joint. The extensor brevis is retracted dorsally and the perineal tendons are corrected. I typically drill a pilot hole at the osteotomy site, 15 millimeters proximal to the calcaneal cuboid joint, to ascertain the width of the bone here. The osteotomy is performed with a saw and stacked osteotomes, with care taken to avoid violation of the medial cortex. The osteotomy can be opened with a lamina spreader or pin distractor. The appropriate amount of distraction is confirmed clinically and radiographically, and trials are used to select the appropriate size Biosync Evans wedge. The wedge should completely fill the osteotomy without protruding beyond the cortex of the calcaneus. The thumb screws of the Arthrex pin distractor prevent migration of the distractor with tension. Integrity of the medial cortex at the osteotomy site can be confirmed by direct visualization. Multiple wedge sizes are available to ensure a proper fit. The threaded inserter facilitates wedge placement and, if necessary, revision. Fine-tuning a placement is performed with gentle impaction. Appropriate placement is confirmed by direct visualization and by fluoroscopy. Integrated screws enhance wedge fixation. The drill guide places the screw at a preset angle to assist in avoidance of the calcaneal cuboid joint. The Arthrex Biosync wedge is indicated for use with supplemental plate fixation. In my practice, I do not find plate fixation necessary. In the presence of posterior tibial tendon pathology, I typically extend the medial incision distally for the cotton osteotomy, although a separate dorsal incision is also appropriate. The tibialis anterior tendon is protected. A saw and stacked osteotomes may again be utilized, with care taken to maintain an intact plantar cortex. The osteotomy is opened with a lamina spreader or pin distractor. The appropriate trial is selected to maximize filling of the osteotomy and to provide the desired amount of correction. The anatomic shape of the Arthrex Biosync Cotton Wedge minimizes violation of the inner cuneiform joint as well as minimizes hardware prominence dorsally and medially. The porous Biosync Wedge allows for improved bony ingrowth with enhanced resistance to abrasion when compared to competitors. As with the Evans wedge, the central fenestration may be filled with bone graft. The threaded inserter facilitates wedge placement, which is fine-tuned with an impactor. Typically, I allow patients to bear weight in a cast boot at two weeks with a medial displacement calcaneal osteotomy or a cotton osteotomy. After a lateral column lengthening procedure, weight bearing commences at four weeks. While the Biosync cotton wedge is indicated for use with plate fixation, I typically do not find this necessary in my practice.